Hello, this video I'm going to show you how to use the Houdini Terrain tool in Unreal Engine. So again, make sure you are having a Houdini Engine installed and I can just drag and drop my Terrain tool in my scene here. So this is then my Terrain that is generated by default. And let's go to some of the settings. So here we have our uh, type, so we can change to, for example, a mountain. This will be more like a mountain area and we also have then a desert one so it's like a more uh, desert feel as you can see so let's start with the forest first we can always change these uh, as we go so we can always try different settings out so let's start with forest and we can for example change the seat number and then we have different uh, variations of our terrain it's always a good idea to uh, play around with a random number or maybe look for something you like uh, for the terrain you want. The next step is uh, setting a, a terrain size. So if we lower this to for example 500, we will then have a way smaller part of that terrain. So we can shrink that area. Then we also have the resolution of this. So by default i put it on a very low resolution so it will also go pretty fast in calculation then so the higher you go the slower the tool might go and also be very careful with uh, the higher ones so maybe we can increase this a bit so we should see some improvements in the quality and now we can use the other setting which is called input so we can input certain shapes so let's take for example a, a sphere here so we're gonna have to increase the size here to make it a lot bigger and we can project the sphere into the terrain so if i go to my tool we can then have a, a geometry from our world so we're gonna have to set a geometry input to world geometry so we can select something in our world to start selecting this sphere use this and now it is getting projected into the terrain What is interesting here can be, for example, in the sphere, we can hide actor and game. So here, when I press the G key, I can switch between that. So now if I would move this around, so maybe I want to have a hill here. We can also use other shapes uh, than spheres. You don't have to use a sphere. This is just an example. So here we then uh, can have the mountain here, for example. So we have like a small button. So we can sort of like sculpt a bit our terrain with like very basic shapes. Like for example, a cone could also be a really interesting shape uh, for that. Then in our tool, we can also do subtracting. So now I have a sphere for adding, but what if I want to copy this sphere and here I want to subtract, like I have maybe a crater there or something like that. So we can then go here to our subtracting. We can do the same process, like we can say a world object. Then we're going to start selecting that object and use as current selecting. So now we are, as you can see, subtracting that shape from the terrain. So again, I can place this around. Like maybe I want it to be here and then it will be calculated here. So these are just a few settings or tools to sculpt the terrain a bit in the way you want it to be. Then we can also have settings. And this is a uh, scaling up noise first. So we have a, a few noises here to create this look, but we can zoom in or zoom out on this area. So if I increase this, then we build basically sort of like zooming in a bit more on that uh, noise. Here, as you can see, we are zooming in more on that noise. And also still, it's sort of like trying to respect the shapes that we plugged in over here. So in this case, uh, this is a quite high point. Uh, something else I did not talk about is also blurring. So we can actually blur the, the shape here. So if I put this on zero, uh, it will try to perfectly match here that shape. So we can project like a free, really custom shapes there. So it's always a good idea to like add some blurring in there. Or maybe if you don't want any projection, you can just click clear selection here. Uh, and we have that gone. Then next up here is the distortion values in the settings. 
So distortion will uh, basically increase sort of like this noisiness uh, of the slope. So if I would play, use this larger, you can see that you will have more distortion there. And sometimes can look really great for like certain cliffs or mountains. Uh, but if you use like the desert preset, I would not use the distortion a lot. Then we also have the slumps. So for this, uh, this is very visible in flatter areas. So here, if I would put this on zero, we can see that everything is like really noisy from our distortion and so on. With the slumps, we can basically have like a sort of like a dirt simulation on there. So it's like covered uh, in a certain dirt layer. We can also have an opacity. So if, in case you want to blend a bit between both of them, we can then have an opacity there. So, but I'm gonna keep it to one. And then we also here have then a height and offset scale. So if I want to scale this, so we can squeeze the terrain or stretch the terrain a bit if you want to. But I think in my case, uh, value one is pretty good here. Then we can also do the offset. So if I want to put it higher or I, if I need like a really specific height offset here, I can do that as well. And next up is then the simulation. So this will make the terrain look better. So right now we have quite basic terrain, but we want to make it a bit better. So we can enable here a simulation. And as you can see, this is what I'm getting. So the first thing that's very noticeable is all sort of like the lines. So it's sort of like we'll do a simulation of um, things falling down. And it will also sort of like uh, redefine the shapes of our uh, cliffs and so on of our rocks. So we'll look a bit better. So normally if I would turn this off, we will quickly see the results. This was before, this is now, so we can quickly see the results. Uh, so if you are not seeing the results that you want to be, you can click start simulation to do a sort of like a reset. Then we also have options here for playing around with this uh, erosion information. So we have our global erosion rate. So if I increase this, we will have more of these lines and so on. Uh, and then we have uh, hydro and thermal. So hydro are basically the lines you see. So if you want to get rid of these lines, we basically would have to fill in here zero and then the lines will be gone. As you see, the lines are now gone. But we still have like the nice shapes in the rocks here. So we can play a bit with these values to uh, tweak these things a bit more about the uh, simulation. So of course, uh, if you want to have better quality, you're gonna have to increase here the resolution. So let's say I want to maybe make it a bit uh, higher resolution. And then I have this result. And you can see that there's automatically a lot of different changes and more uh, like erosion going on. So a high resolution means also that the erosion or the simulation has more resolution to work with, which will also uh, will have more of these uh, like lines of the hydro coming down and so on. So you're gonna have to find a bit of balance between there. But again, that's also why we have these values to like lower uh, some of the uh, hydro, for example. So let's say I'm happy with this terrain. Uh, we can keep this as an output, so we can uh, here we can have the bake button to bake this as output, but we can also use a texture output. So in case you want to save out the textures, uh, you can do that as well. So here uh, we're gonna have to say the location of where we want it to be saved. So once we have a location, we can just press the render button. So in here I then have my textures. Unreal might have a pop-up asking you if you want to import them or not. So, but here anyway, I have them. So I have my height map. Then I've also have my layers. So this will be a, a grass and cliff layer. So I have two different layers if I want to use the texture. And I've also here have a mask for specifically for from the simulation. So you can see that this is like a very specific a direction or flow that we can also export in a texture and you can use this in an advanced material. Uh, now furthermore we can also have then materials. So in here I made the basic material so I can drag that in here and then we have our material. So as you can see this is all done uh, for you by default so I made a, a automatic uh, so I made an automatic layer system that can change between grass and these uh, rocks for the cliffs. So this is what you would get out of the box. And this is also same as this texture here. So it's the same result here uh, that, you that you're currently seeing in the viewport. So if I would uh, now switch to, for example, my terrain mode, 
uh, we can see in our terrain if we go to uh, paint we can see that we have two layers so we have a layer for cliffs and a layer for uh, grass and that's also how i made this material so in there i'm just blending between this uh, these two colors and i'm just using again the same names layer cliff and grass so this is also uh, coming from houdini so you can customly do this in houdini and this is then what you basically get out of the box with this tool a really nice uh, blending between two uh, materials you can do so that was basically it for this video so i hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching